Hey there viewers, welcome back to my spooky channel because it's Halloween time. And what better to do this October than talk about the disgrace of the Halloween Town franchise? Okay, one of the disgraces of the Halloween Town franchise. You know, the one where Marnie isn't Marnie, but instead she's Aquamarine from the movie Aquamarine. And also Ryan from High School Musical is there for some reason. First and foremost, I would like to get something totally stupid and nitpicky off my chest, which is that the way they've titled this whole series really annoys me. Like the first one is called Halloween Town, obviously. Then for the sequel, they went for the whole colon method with Halloween Town 2, colon Caliber's Revenge. So you'd think they'd want to continue down that path and the third one would be called Halloween Town 3, colon blah blah blah. But instead they just call at Halloween Town High, and they don't even really stay consistent with that because this one is called Return to Halloween Town. Like, where's the consistency? Where is the cohesiveness? Why did they do this? This might single handedly be why we only claim the first two. Just kidding, there are a lot of reasons why we only claim the first two. I think there are a couple of Disney Channel original movies that transcend just being Disney Channel original movies, and Halloween Town is one of them. It's basically just Halloween Town and High School Musical, but you know. You might remember from my Disney Channel video that I think sometimes people look back on nostalgic properties with rose-colored glasses and assume everything new has to be worse just because it's new. This is not one of those cases. <laughs> like, I watched the original Halloween Town for this video and it still slaps to this day. It might not be winning any Oscars, but it's cute and funny enough that it's become a classic Halloween movie. Return to Halloween Town is, in my opinion, inarguably inferior and really stupid. The movie starts like this. A Cromwell of great power will embrace the gift. Marnie Piper is a Cromwell of the prophecy, the one we have waited for. So right from the get-go, any reasonable person would stop watching because what is this? But I had a YouTube video to make, so I soldiered on and the next thing I saw was this map of Halloween Town where they have completely inconspicuously added witch university. Yeah, that was not there before. You can't pull these tricks on me. Anyway, witch you is where the movie takes place. Every time they say it out loud, a little piece of me dies. I've been accepted to witch university. I'm going to witch you. Cromwell at witch university. <laughs> I can't believe I'm really going to Witch University. Welcome to Witch University. So Marnie is having this argument with her mom, whose character, by the way, has essentially been reduced to talking into household objects. Hello, mother. Are you all right? Wait, I love you. Call it mother's intuition or witch's worry, but because Marnie wants to go to Witch you and her mom doesn't approve. Sounds kind of familiar. Sounds kind of like they took the beginning of the first movie, got rid of all the fun dialogue and good acting and rebranded it into whatever this is. With all that power comes responsibility, Marnie. You stole it from Spider-Man. If you watch Return to Halloween Town long enough, you start to notice that they really have no regard for the character development in the previous movies. Whatever though, I guess it doesn't matter because not even a scene later she's leaving and her mom's disapproval is never elaborated on or resolved, so apparently the whole scene really was just a hopeless attempt to remind us of the original. Exactly the way I imagined it would be. Exciting and ancient and magical. Who are you talking to? Literally nobody is near you. This guy is the villain, but you could probably guess, judging by the fire behind him or the snakes in his portrait. Oh, and his last name is Sinister, so I guess this movie's not really into the whole subtlety thing. Like, don't get me wrong, an obvious villain can be just as good or better than a plot twist one, but I think we can all agree this is overkill. Anyway, they're really excited to see Ryan from High School Musical, but I haven't watched Halloween Town High probably since it came out. I have no idea what his deal is, and I refuse to watch that movie again unless I have to. How hard would it have been not to start tripping until your feet actually hit the suitcase? So next we're introduced to what I guess you could call the plastics of which university. I'm pretty sure it's just one girl copy and paste it three times. Animal print skirts and all. They call them the Sinister Sisters. Yes, really. Do I even need to explain what makes them so annoying? Didn't you read the handbook? Don't get it! We're mortal, Dumbbell. We might as well be ugly. Mortal. Why are they so totally boring? 
Dr. Grog, look what I found! You guys know how I feel about cheesy Queen Bee characters, which is that I do not like them. And I feel like this spooky little witch trio right here just goes to show that this movie doesn't understand the original at all. I mean, Halloween Town is a unique family adventure movie. It's driven by its world building and comedy and theme about family bonds. Return to Halloween Town is your average, annoyingly predictable Disney Channel original high school movie, complete with dumb, cheesy dialogue and bad acting. But this time, they're witches. Gag me. Anyway, Dylan decides he has a crush on one of them. Aquamarine finds out that she's not allowed to use magic on the campus, and then Dylan reveals that he'll also be a student there. I'm almost positive that they're supposed to have a decent age gap, and this is her freshman year, so it's kind of a plot hole, but you know, whatever. It leads to this hilariously awful conversation. I'm staying. That's funny, because it just sounded like you said you're staying. I'm a student. Where? Here. That's funny, because it just sounded like you said here. She really did just say the exact same thing twice. I thought I had accidentally skipped back or something, but nope, that's the actual movie. They did that. I don't think it was intentional either. I could be wrong and they could really have put that in the script, but for some reason, I feel like Aquamarine just mixed up her lines and they kept it in. I hope that's true, because it's even sadder to think that somebody sat down and wrote a screenplay like that on purpose. No magic in school? This is Halloween Town. It's supposed to be all magic all the time. I can't believe my mom sent my little brother to babysit me. Again? Who are you talking to? You are alone in your room. We all talk to ourselves from time to time, but isn't it usually like a lowly whisper or saying ouch when you stub your toe? Please tell me people don't just hold full conversations with themselves like this. Anyway, next Marnie evaporates into a lamp and makes friends with a genie. They go to lunch and she runs into Ryan again. The whole interaction is really awkward and they say a lot of things I don't understand. You two know each other. I just wanted to say I'm sorry, you know, for everything. Apparently somebody needs to clue me in on Halloween Town High because I just do not know what's going on with these two. There's a scene where the lead sinister sister steals a book from Marnie's desk and then purses her lips because she is evil. The sinister sister's character traits can be boiled down to bad fashion sense, permanently puckered lips, and walking together dramatically. The movie just really, really doesn't want us to forget that they're evil. As if the fact that they do a bunch of really mean things totally unprovoked wasn't clear enough. I can't believe it. Scarlet did that. You should make her disappear. Stop talking to yourself. So I guess the whole plot of this movie is that there's a prophecy. Marnie Piper is a promo of the prophecy. The one we have waited for. That Marnie will find the gift and I am happy to report the child has found the ancient box which contains the gift. Which will somehow make a lot of the school's staff powerful. Soon, we will rule Halloween Town. Yeah, I don't really get it either. But the teachers and principal or chancellor or whatever they call it have this little cult where they try to make the prophecy come true. It's really confusing actually because the gift is essentially this amulet that Marnie could control that will allow her to make anybody do exactly as she tells them. So I don't get why this gang of teachers think that that would help them in any way. It's all pretty lame and cheesy. You knew I'd be doing my laundry? Are you spying on me? No. When I was in college, I did my laundry on Wednesdays too. I don't care how close a mother and daughter are, the fact that you did laundry on Wednesdays does not mean anything. How would she come to this conclusion? Honestly, wouldn't it have made more sense if she said something about how Wednesday was laundry day at home and that's how she gets? Can we stop playing ourselves here? Anyway, Aquamarine and Ryan start to hit it off, I guess, so they're the romance of the movie. Great, yeah, I totally cared about them this whole time. A lot of this movie is boring and I don't want to explain it, so we're just gonna pretend it never happened. Healthy appetite. I like that girl. Can I just say, there is not a single other cliched line of dialogue that infuriates me more than this one. Uh, given the choice, would you rather have a rice cake or a Big Mac? A Big Mac? <laughs> what does that matter? Well, I like a girl with a hearty appetite. <laughs> and besides, you just eliminated about 50% of the girls in our class. <laughs> Ashley Wells told me he likes to see a girl with a healthy appetite. 
will never be able to understand why it's a romantic trope for the guy to comment on how much the girl eats. Maybe it annoys me because I know if the girl was fat, they would not be humming the same song or because there has never been a scene where a girl tells a guy she's a fan of his food consumption, but I hate this. It's just another backwards way for a guy to say, you're not like other girls. Other girls being girls who diet in this case. If I went on a date with a guy and he complimented how much or how little I was eating, I would not be going on a second date because personally, I'd rather not have a human calorie counter as a boyfriend. Thank you very much. Anyway, with that rant out of the way, is now a good time to rant about how much better the real Marnie is at playing Marnie than Aquamarine. I don't have the best eye for what is and isn't good acting, but there's a definite power imbalance here. I always thought Kim Kimberly Jam Brown like didn't want to be in this movie, but it turns out she just had some scheduling conflicts. Honestly, I wish they would have postponed this whole production for her. If it was absolutely impossible to get her, they should have just canceled it altogether. You know what? Even if they could get her, they should have canceled it altogether. I'm never very fond of recasting. Even if I like the new actor, it's so distracting to me. How am I supposed to get invested in a story if I can't stop thinking about the production mishap that led to a whole character being recast? Like, this isn't Marnie's face. You expect me to believe that this is Marnie's face. No can do, sis. Again, a lot of this movie is boring and I don't wanna explain it, so we're just gonna pretend it never happened. It's just truly sad when a few people force their views on everyone else. My mom says that. <laughs> What an inspirational quote to be passed through the family. Tis really sad. <laughs> Honestly, I'm happy for that line because I think I'm gonna start saying that anytime I'm disappointed. Blah, 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 she goes back in time. Dylan turns into a dog. She finally comes to the conclusion that all the obviously evil people are evil. Sorry, I really can't be bothered to get into the details. Should I? I guess if you guys want to be clued in on the intricacies of Return to Halloween Town, but do you? No. Anyway, in the end, Aquamarine pretends to be on the villain's side, which is a very original idea that's never been done before. And that's how she's able to get Dylan turned back into a human. She also traps the gift in her friend's lamp and destroys it. Or so we think. Dun dun dun! She actually sends it to a library book for her brother to find. Because that's the safest idea ever and you totally can't tell there's something iffy in that book. Surely nobody else will find it in this public library. The Sinister Sisters get their comeuppance and all at once we get two weird minor plot twists that don't even almost affect the plot. For one, Ryan reveals that his powers were stripped from something that happened in the last movie, go figure. So now he's just immortal, which means that when he gave her flowers earlier in the movie, they didn't come out of thin air and he learned a non-magical magic trick. Oh, the betrayal. And also one of her professors is actually a spy. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't just leave well enough alone. Anyway, that's it, that's the movie. It's hard for me to even explain what makes it worse than the original Halloween Town, but it sort of speaks for itself. Put any given scene from each movie next to each other and I don't think anybody could tell you they prefer this one. It's almost hard to imagine them in the same universe. Firstly, because nobody believes Aquamar Marine is Marnie, but also everything else. I mean, the second two Halloween Town movies are just so tonally different from the first two. The first two are quirky little family films with a lot of heart and fun. They can be totally cheesy, but it's a different kind of cheesy than this. They can be predictable, but exploring a whole new world of Halloween Town makes up for that. When you constrict a Halloween Town movie to one campus in Halloween Town, you're not doing yourself any favors. I couldn't tell the difference between something like this and Vampire Academy. It's not a Halloween Town movie as much as it's just another forgettable Disney Channel original movie. It's probably mostly about the acting and dialogue though, and considering a lot of the actors are the same, it's probably mostly the dialogue. It's just really, really cringy. Nobody could deliver these lines well. Man, this family is so mushy. Just don't lick my face. So, in conclusion, Halloween Town slaps and Return to Halloween Town like doesn't even lightly press its fingers together. And that's that.